Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Secrets of Star Wars. I'm Father Roderick, and I'm about to invite my good friend Dom Bettinelli to join me on this discussion of the news coming from the Star Wars celebration in London that just ended a couple of days ago. Uh, in fact, we're recording this on Tuesday, and of course, the last day of the celebration was on Sunday. So it's a good, uh, good moment, I think, to... Um, to look back at everything we've learned and also everything we didn't learn <laughs> from uh, these amazing Star Wars days. Uh, Dom is joining me from Boston, Massachusetts, where it's probably even hotter than it is here in the Netherlands where I'm recording. It is about 85 degrees here in the studio. I sent Dom a link. I hope this, this works. We'll see it in a minute. Um, I'll be recording this without any um, jingles. I'm going to, or, or uh, movie clips or whatever. We'll add that in in post production uh, for two reasons. <laughs> I don't have the ability to uh, stream the jingles live and also for copyright motives because if uh, Google notices um, the sound from trailers, for instance, they will flag the recording, which is something that is OK with me, but it, it might hamper the visibility of this recording afterwards. So in order to hear the real, the, the final mix, um, you can go to sqpn.com slash Star Wars, which is where you can find all the episodes uh, and the previous episodes as well. All righty, let me see if I can um, go to the to the chat I'm to click this one. At least I hear myself back. That's good. I see we have uh, Inga and Joel in, or Joel in the chat room, and we'll obviously be joined by many more. Because if you put uh, Hangouts is not seeing Dom's microphone. Uh, OK. Those are the technical issues as soon as you want to do something. And I'm, I'm uh, taking the sound from the laptop that I'm also using to stream the Hangout and uh, routing that back into my Zoom recorder. So hopefully on my end, we will also be able to have a good recording. If not, I'll have to do some post-processing. Uh, do, 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 do. It's going all right. In the meantime, uh, hello, Los Angeles. I cannot imagine how hot it must be on that side of the planet. <laughs> that is really, really hot. Uh, let me take a look at the temperatures outside. And Mike is joining us also. From which part of the world are you, Mike? <laughs> Let me see what temperature it is outside. Um, oh, it's already uh, 31 degrees uh, Celsius right now outside. So it's probably also same temperature here inside because I have no air conditioning and I'm right underneath a flat roof that gets. And, and then this is also uh, the, the sun is now directly shining on my window. So it's 88 degrees. Fahrenheit, uh, both in and outside of the studio. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to talk. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to make any, any movement uh, in order to be able to survive the excitement of, of talking about Star Wars. 86 degrees in Atlanta. Wow, so it's even hotter here than it is in hot Atlanta. Unbelievable. How is Canada? Canada can be... Uh, can can be all over the place. Of course, if if you're in the center, it can get really really hot. Um, let's see. Although Mike's last name seems to indicate that you're more from the uh, from the eastern part, perhaps even potentially the uh, French part of Canada. But that's just based on you've got a kind of a French last name. Uh, I assume that if Dom. Is able to join me. Uh, oh, I can see you. 
but I can't hear you. Uh, all right, let's see. So now I have to fix things on my end. So I'm putting up the microphone. Okay, if you can just say something. Um, I probably have to route the audio from the um, Apple and tell the Mac to send. Can, ah! can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Oh, Loud. good. I think I was muted. All right, hold on, hold on. I need to lower your volume a little bit because it's very, <laughs> okay. very loud. Uh, okay. Can you say something? Testing one, two. That's much better. All right. I heard what you were saying about the heat. Actually, we've our heat has broken. It oh. is a pleasant, a pleasant seventy-eight degrees today in Boston. That is that is so good. That's the temperature. <laughs> that is perfect barbecue weather. Oh yes. Well, you know, we we barbecue in all the weather. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Well, I, I gotta kind of not do too much because I I can already feel that my head is with the headphones. <laughs> there is there is no air around me. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um, all right. Well, well, we'll just talk about anything and everything, um, and then we'll wrap it up after uh, after an hour or so. There was so much content. I'm not sure I'm I'm up on everything, but I I'm willing to Me comment neither. on anything. Neither. But that's not. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll do our best. Yeah. It's it's good to have some. It's I mean it's okay to have some leftovers. All right. Let me start the show. You're listening to The Secrets of Star Wars on sqpn.com. Hi, and welcome to a new episode of The Secrets of Star Wars, the show where Dom and I talk about everything and anything Star Wars related, and we try to look underneath the surface of the special effects and the acting, and, and, and sometimes also talk about the deeper meaning of Star Wars and all the, the, the themes and the mythology of Star Wars and the links with moral choices and religion and philosophy and all that. So, as I said, joining me today, as usual, my good friend Dom Bettinelli. How are you? Good, Father. How are you? Very excited. Always great to have Star Wars uh, talk. Yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been too long. We, we've, we've not talked Star Wars for a while. Uh, but, of course, there is plenty to talk about because this last weekend, we're recording this on uh, Tuesday, the 19th of July. The last Sunday was the conclusion of this epic three-day Star Wars celebration in London, and even though it was right next door, I mean, I only have to step in on, onto a, an airplane or in a boat, and I'd be there in a few hours. I could not be there because, well, I, I'm a parish priest, so I had parish duties over the weekend. My, my colleague is on vacation, and, uh, well, for you, it's a little bit uh, farther away, right? <laughs> yes, it's a bit of a journey over the uh, Atlantic Ocean for me, but... Uh, Has there uh, ever I've... been a Star Wars celebration on the East Coast? I th I think there was one in New York at, at one point, but oh, okay. uh, that's that's fairly close to me. I mean, that's a five hour mm -hmm. drive away, so I could I could make that. Hey, they're welcome to come to Boston. I mean, there's plenty of Star Wars fans yeah, in Boston. Why not? <laughs> well, next year it's going to be in Orlando, and I already checked the dates. And again, I won't be able to make it because that's the weekend of Easter. And oh. well, I love Star Wars, and it's almost on par with you know everything I love about the Catholic faith. But yeah, Easter <laughs> is a little bit more important. <laughs> it takes precedence. But it's, it's great to have such a celebration taking place in you know in the most festive weekend for Catholics as well. So there, for me, it will be a double party. <laughs> Well, next year, of course, 2017, there will be plenty and plenty of news about uh, the, the next installment in the, in the new trilogy, so we will hear much more about Star Wars 8. But this year, I think uh, Rogue One took center stage. So today we're going to talk about the news that, came, that, we, that we gathered about uh, Star Wars Rogue One. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about Star Wars Rebels. There were some interesting tidbits about the third season. And, of course, we will also try to talk about anything we, we learned about Star Wars 8, even though it was a bit less than I expected. Did, did, did you expect, you know, like big groundbreaking news or perhaps even like a glimpse of what they were shooting? No, I, I, I think... Uh, you know, I, I think Disney wants to concentrate on each of its big movies at you know as they come out, each one at a time. Um, th there's that danger. Everyone just watched The Force Awakens, and now we now we really want to know what's going to happen in the next one. Yes. But 
but and, and so it's it's that danger of overshadowing their their next big movie that they True. want to be successful. Rogue not, One. Not, to, not to mention that they're filming it next door. They just wrapped up <laughs> uh, the the principal shooting for, for that movie. <laughs> exactly. So th I, I'm not surprised that Disney wanted to sort of downplay a little bit, not a lot. I mean, I mean or you know, the, we got we got some content about uh, Episode Eight and about some other. Uh, future Star Wars yes. uh, movies yeah. and some news on that as well. So you know, they, they, I think they're being realistic in that. You know, we 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 have to hear something. They can't just ignore it. But you know, obviously, it, they want to talk about their next big movie, which you know, for in, in some respects, is is really the big unknown for them because it's the first Star Wars movie that's outside the big Skywalker family saga. So yes, it's, and it's, it. it it's a novel concept. It's a it's a standalone movie. We're gonna. Ha it's it's like the prequel of the original movie, um, which is also something that they need to kind of they need to need they need to make that clear to the potential audience. Because my mom, for instance, she she is like, oh, is this, is this going to be the sequel to uh, that that other Star Wars movie? And so explaining to the general public that this is taking us back to the time right before A New Hope. That alone is 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 going to be uh, quite a, a challenge, I think, for Disney. So let's talk about Star Wars. Star Wars uh, Rogue One, uh, or I think it's Rogue One: A Star Wars Story. That's the official uh, title of the movie. Um, there was a very very cool um, behind the scenes uh, uh, compilation of footage. Let's listen to the audio. I can't, I can't show you the video, of course, uh, because this is an audio podcast. But let's let's just. Uh, glimpse a little bit of the audio from that video. Insert audio here. Of course, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, I'll add that later. <laughs> so, Dom, your first reaction to this footage. Well, I mean, we got we got some new stuff. Um, it's it's a lot of behind the scenes sort of uh, footage, but we got some nice close up views of some of the new the new uh, the new stormtroopers, uh, some of the new the the new Tie Fighter that we're gonna see. Um, you know, and so it's it's sort of an interesting. You know, when we saw the teaser, it went by like that. You know, fast, fast, fast. And you know, we would stop a frame and try to analyze it and that sort of stuff when we when we looked at it together. But this is we got a bit more of a of a view on it, and we got a nice sort of um, uh, the director. Um, I keep getting them mixed up. Is it Gareth Edwards or Ryan Johnson? I think. It's, uh <laughs> now, that, now that you put me on the spot, <laughs> uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's Garrett Edwards, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, whichever one it is, <laughs> um, kind of talks it's about Edwards. It's Edwards. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> good. He, Thank he, you. He filmed, uh, uh, Godzilla. He, he did Godzilla. Okay. And, uh, next so, movie. so he kind of gives us a little bit of um, his viewpoint. Um, he, in some ways, it was like uh, you know J.J. Abrams talking about what it's like to be someone who was a fan as a kid making Star Wars now, and how to sort of um, get beyond that awe of the original, like it's untouchable, and say, well, I've got to touch it, I've got to change it and shape it to be something that I'm making, a new story. Um, and so to, to, we got kind of a little of his viewpoint, and and so I, I, it was. It wasn't enough for me. I mean, I want more. <laughs> um, but you know, for those who haven't seen it, you know, go out and see it. The you know the yeah, as you just heard the audio. But um, I'm, I'm pretty to... sure that almost anyone who's listening to this podcast has seen it multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not the trailer that uh, that uh, no. last week everyone was talking about. We were going to get uh, the the next trailer, and which they um, showed, but not to us. They didn't they didn't air it. Actually, uh, uh, Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, told everyone in in the room to turn off their cell phones, and they had the big warning like uh, "lose lips, uh, sink uh, starships." <laughs> uh, of course, someone did film it. I I I purposely didn't watch it, and I think the reason that they didn't uh, put it online immediately was that they uh, some of the special effects might have been a little bit um, like unfinished, or that they they want to make sure that if they release this to the general public, it looks perfect, and and apparently it wasn't ready yet. Um, so some people have seen it. Definitely the the people in the room. I've I've read a description of the of that like a very very short one minute trailer, and a lot of the footage that you see is from is also are are scenes that you see in this behind the scenes video as well. Mm -hmm. But the major reveal is something that, well, I I don't think it's a spoiler, but it <laughs> is a reflection in a black door of the main villain of that era, which of course is Darth <laughs> Vader. <laughs> of, course, although, of course. Although 
I, I get the distinct impression that they're not going to overuse Darth Vader. He will be in it, but from the presentation, um, uh, and especially the introduction of Mads Mikkelsen, who came fully dressed in his white garb and 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 flanked by two uh, death troopers in in black armor, I think he's going to be the, the big villain of the movie, and and Darth Vader will be kind of a supporting character almost. Yeah, I I think that's it would be. It would kind of overplay it if we if they tried to bring in Darth Vader and make him a big bad villain in this. I think, um, uh, for if I, you know, my guess to what the story is is that Darth Vader at the beginning of A New Hope he shows up to at the at the Death Star to to kind of oversee. Hey, you guys have fallen behind in 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 building this thing. He's just showing up there. You know, you know what I mean. So and. Uh, you know, and when he when he captures Princess Leia, I, I get the sense. You know, now that we know what this is, he's he's cleaning up. He's the fixer. He's the Emperor's yeah. fixer. He gets sent out to to do things, and so, you know, whatever we see of him in uh, in Rogue One is probably going to be him sort of menacing the uh, uh, the 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 big bad guy that we have in this movie, uh, sort of you know from afar. Uh, uh, over, you know, hologram or something um, like, hey, you know, if you don't fix this, I'm going to come out and fix it, that sort of thing. So I, I'm going to guess that's what we're going to get. I mean, especially since um, I, I, we did hear that James Earl Jones is is doing the voice. Yes, and, and they already most, recorded it. Uh, yes. Which apparently for the director was also a dream come true. <laughs> I can totally imagine. <laughs> um, and and he's and James Earl Jones is um, you know mostly retired now I think so you know yeah. that he's he's not up to doing a whole movie although you know recording in a studio you know uh, voice in a studio is not as as um, uh, draining I guess but so uh, it doesn't surprise me I never thought that um, you know it would be nice but I never thought that Darth Vader was going to be a big part of this movie. No, and I like that we get a fresh villain, you know, and some and and um, the, the funny thing is, of course, it's uh, he's played by uh, Matt Mickelson, who, if I'm not mistaken, is the bad guy also in the first uh, 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 the Casino Roya Royale James Bond movie. Is it? Isn't he the guy with the scar who is playing the cards and he's really, really creepy? <laughs> I, you know, I don't remember. See, he, both he and his, and his brother yes. um, Lars. He's also play villains in different things and I get them mixed up so I'm not sure which well, was which so let me tell you so his brother is Lars Mikkelsen and yeah. uh, both from Denmark they're, they're not American actors mm -hmm. um, so um, if I go to his IMDB page actually it's quite quite interesting how many uh, roles he's been in he's just one of those guys that you yeah. recognize and you're like huh? What other movie was he in again? <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I was driving myself crazy trying to figure out where Lars was in. And Lars, uh, um, American um, Netflix users, will recognize him from House of Cards. He plays the Russian president who's just like Putin. Is that him? Like Man, and he was awesome. That was such <laughs> yeah. an amazing role. And, and yeah. genuinely creepy. And he's got, he's got charm, but he's also... So, oh, Wow. Now yeah. I'm now I'm even more excited. Well, especially yeah, since Lars uh, is not in Rogue One, but we could talk about him in a bit, I guess. But he does he is going to be in a Star Wars role uh, very soon. So yeah, isn't he going to be in in, uh, in Rebels or uh... he's he's going to be the new big bad guy in Rebels uh, yeah, that we're awesome. very excited yes. about. So we'll talk about we'll keep that for later. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's it's so cool. So uh, he played Le Chiffre in Casino Royale. He's also. Uh, Hannibal Lecter in that TV series, I think, that I haven't seen. Oh, um, he plays yeah. in The Hunt. Uh, I mean, he's got a very, very impressive uh, 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 amount of, of movies that he's been in. But this is probably one of his most important roles, um, together with, I think, Le Chiffre. Um, and, uh, well, I'm, I'm just excited that they found someone who immediately, when you see him, is like, this is someone with almost a magnetic villain, villainy about him. I mean, he, he is a very, very, um, let's, the moment he is in a scene, all, all eyes on our him, are on him. And I think you need something like that. You need a charism for a new bad guy. Um, and so from what, from what we've heard from the, from the panel discussion, um, is, isn't he also kind of a, like a supervisor and, and, and he's, he's kind of the guy in charge of, uh, of the Death Star or, or the proceedings? Yeah. I get the sense. Uh, I think it was, it was the, the title was something like uh, Director of Security. 
Mm-hmm. So he's in charge of making sure that the the, that the Death Star don't get stolen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that the rebels don't come in and uh, and 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 do what they do, which is mess everything yes. up. <laughs> By the way, the panel discussion started with a with the the familiar Star Wars scroll, and I loved what they did with that because you see the the opening scroll for it. Did you see that the episode four? No. And then the 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 camera moves and the scroll we get like a pan out or like a pan up on the scroll itself and it focuses on the paragraph where it says that the rebel spies were able to get the plans for the Death Star <laughs> and then you see this static and you 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 see a glimpse of the Death Star and then uh, you hear like soldiers running and it, it's just amazing the the way they did that it's just the scroll that we're so familiar with. <laughs> But then they they tie it into like this is the story behind the opening story of Star Wars Four. I thought it was brilliant. If the, I would not, uh, I I would love it if the movie would actually start with it. I I don't think it's going to be that that way. They did hint at that we actually won't get an opening score for yeah. uh, for one, and I I don't mind. Some people, some fans were upset, but I think it's good if you overuse the opening scroll. Like every single Star Wars video starts with that. It, it just gets too much. <laughs> it's a long read, you know. Just right. give us a story. So, um, but but I I would l- actually no, that would be probably too confusing if it would start with the opening for episode four <laughs> scroll and and then do something weird with it. But I like what they did there. And also, so I, yeah. Go ahead. I, actually, I, I want to just jump back a sec because I think I might have I I think I mixed up to, two of the actors. So um, you you might have been right. I was I think I might have been. Uh, Saying that Mads Mikkelsen was this the, our big bad guy. He's actually a different character. He plays our main character. Right. Uh, yes, Galen. Uh, Galen. Galen Galen Erso. Erso, the our main character's dad, I think. Uh, Lear, um, or something oh, along the It Erso's must be. Dad. It must be the heat. You're so right. How can I mix that up? I was yeah. thinking of him as a bad guy, but <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, so, so the the actor who plays director Orson Krennic, yeah, uh, is Ben Mendelsohn. Oh, so he's yes. uh, he's Australian by origin. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So, You're right, and, uh, and and from from the panel now, I, I I get it. They told that he was actually going to to be a, an Australian villain, an Australian <laughs> imperial, and that it would be like menacing, but he would also have a certain flair. <laughs> I'm not. Wow, I totally assumed that that um, that uh, Lars was going to play also. Or Mads was also playing uh, that that guy in white, but I only saw him from afar. So please forgive me. I've I've not paid attention. Well, well he's played so many bad guys. You just expect him to be. Yes. So yes. what do we know about Galen Urso? Is he is he uh, uh, the father of? Uh, is that the the character of the father of the of the? Um, uh, what's her name? Um, he's he's either the dad. I'm you know it's he's. He's old enough to be her father. He's older than I am, so he's old enough to be the father of uh, of, of Jin Urso. Uh, there's also another yes. character, uh, Lyra Urso, um, played by uh, Val- Valine Kane. Um, I'm not sure if she's a uh, sister or mom. Uh, I'm not sure of her age. Uh, a gentleman doesn't ask uh, a lady's age, but uh, you know she. Uh, so I think there's a family dynamic. To our main character here, which is going to be uh, interesting. Um, yeah, she must be sister. She's a uh, mm-hmm. an Irish, uh, actress born in 1987. So the, uh, there must be a family dynamic involved in this. Um, and where Mads Mikkelsen, I mean, his he's listed fairly high in the credits and IMDb. That that usually indicates um, right. Yeah. Well, the importance of a character. The cool thing is, uh, so G- Galen Urso is is playing Jin's father. Um, and uh, they tease that he, uh, so this is the actor, Mickelson, who said about his character, he once invented something so beautiful, so fantastic, that it could change the universe. And there has been a lot of speculation about the fact that actually he is the inventor of the Death Star technology. Mm. But that originally, and, and, and this is speculation, but I'm, I'm thinking perhaps he invented this whatever beam, energy beam that could revitalize a dead planet. And then the kind of uh, it's almost like a Star Trek thing, you know, where, where you have like good technology that is now used for evil and that, that the Death Star originally was, was supposed to be something good, like not a weapon. But and I, I would love it if that were the case, because it would make us look at the Death Star from a totally different perspective all of a sudden. Instead of this just being this super, you know, planets or moon sized super weapon, 
it would have been something that was originally planned to do good in the universe. Anyway. Well, I mean, it kind of gets to the, that classic idea of um, te- you know, technology. It's knowledge that can be used for good or for evil. You know that, mm-hmm. uh, that you know th- that uh, good can be perverted to be used for evil, and sometimes good people, you know, create things for good. Uh, that get perverted, and because they're like we've seen this uh, a lot of times in different movies. You know, the the good person who who is so excited by their their technology that they they lose sight of how other people are using it, and they get too trapped in the the technology to see the damage that it does. Um, and it would be interesting that would that would make sense. Then why would the you know that the rebellion would send his daughter in to go? to steal the plans as she would be the, 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 that would be the route to get to the plans for the Death Star through her right, father. And, and apparently she, she is still kind of figuring out what her role is supposed to be. This is the first Star Wars character that is, doesn't, we know exactly where she, she's coming from. Proof, of course, being the fact that we know her father and we know what his background is, but it's, it's she probably has to make a choice whether she's going to help the rebels or if she's going to be loyal to the Imperials or whatever. So that that's, it's, it's kind of a, a coming of age story, probably not. But it's it's in a way her story is very different and similar to Luke Skywalker's story in that she she will have to determine what her role is going to be in in the in the big you know spectacle of, of that's taking place between the rebels and the and, and the empire. Yeah, it's that classic. You have a choice. You can choose the way of good or the way of evil. And. Yeah. And, and, but and, this time they're not, they're not going to bring in the the whole force thing. Even though in the in the yeah. video, they, I love that moment where she says, "May the force be with us." That that just yes. I made made me since shivers up my spine. I was like, oh, "This is so <laughs> cool! This is Star Wars." <laughs> but it's it's going to be that same moral uh, choice. You, uh, w- your talents, your strength, your knowledge, whatever you have, uh, whether it's the force or just human talents. Uh, how are you going to uh, make use of them? And are you going to keep them for right. yourself, um, like what Vader and the Imperials are doing, or are you put that to, do you put that to the service of the of the protection of life? Um, by the way, I, I this this whole presentation and the panel reassured me tremendously because, of course, we heard those rumors, and I think we discussed them also uh, in our episode about uh, Rogue One, um, the, the the trailer that we saw. Uh, that there would be reshoots because the movie was too dark and too much warlike and that Disney was a little, or at least the executives at Disney were too too much taken aback by the different style. I think they've made it very, very clear that this is a war movie. And this is a, this is a genre, this is a style of movie making that we've never seen before. And Kathleen Kennedy was raving about the camera skills of, uh, of Garrett Edwards and saying that this is going to be the most immersive Star Wars experience that you've had so far. Which is making me super excited. I, well, apparently, it's, is, it's just going to be the, the the camera is just yeah. moving around all the time, and Gareth Ad- Edwards just was just running around with camera on his shoulder himself. And these are huge IMAX cameras, <laughs> so but all to to make it feel real and very you know as if we are there. Well, previously, I mean, mostly the the people we followed were. Were star pilots, starfighter pilots. You know, mm-hmm. with Luke and Han and Anakin, and you know, and then even most of uh, the Force Awakens occurs in space. You know, we get on the Millennium Falcon and that sort of thing. Um, you know, whereas you know, this is, you know, this is these are these are ground troops. These are ground pounders. These are you know soldiers on the ground going in. It's it make it's it's much grittier. They don't fly above it at, at yeah. all. I mean, this is much grittier, and it's going to be face to face and and. And I like the idea of telling different kinds of stories within Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Within, you know, this is a great a great universe to 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 play in. Let's tell different kinds of stories. I mean, I'm not sure I want a rom com, uh, you know, a romantic comedy uh, well, in Star Wars. In a way, Empire Strikes Back <laughs> was a bit of a rom com <laughs> at, at, at times. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had un- and we've had unintentional comedies, uh, uh, you know, but uh, slapstick in the in the prequels. But but you know, like but but I like the idea the idea of trying new things, trying different things, um, and 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 I'm looking forward to seeing you know what what kind of vision they come from this. You know, and let's let's be honest. You know, I'm fully prepared for this in this new Disney era of of Star Wars where we have films all the time. There will be hits and misses, and yeah. some movies are going to be great. Some movies are not gonna are not gonna be great, 
Um, it's not the end of the world and it's not the end of Star Wars if if it doesn't. I'm not saying that because I think Rogue One isn't going to be good. I really, wa- I really want it to be good. I think it's going to be good. But in the, in the big picture, I'm prepared to, to recognize that there will be good, you know, th- th- they should try things. They should take risks. And sometimes when you take a risk, you don't always hit a, you know, hit the home run. And, and I'm, yeah. I'm prepared for that. Another risk, of course, is if you introduce a new droid, because droids are very much Star Wars. Star Wars without droids yep. in, in leading roles, or at least secondary roles, uh, wouldn't be Star Wars. And so we get the introduction of a new droid called K2SO, played by Alan Tudyk. And he, for the first time, was able to, to tell us more about his character. It's, it's a motion capture droid. He, so he, he bumped into uh, 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 Anthony uh, Daniels, uh, and and introduce himself, Alan. That is, as I'm I'm going to be the new Star Wars droid. And then uh, <laughs> the question was like, so so are you in a suit or are you in a? Is it motion capture? And he said it's motion capture. <laughs> I have to meet Daniel. So I was like, oh, I hate you. <laughs> that of course is so much more comfortable, I guess, <laughs> doing motion yeah. capture than being kind of like in in a desert in a like I don't know 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then oh. having to wear. A C-3PO suit, but what I love about it is the description that this, and we saw a glimpse even of a scene where someone gives him a bag to carry and he just drops it. So the background of this character is that he was used to be an imperial droid, but the rebels have wiped his memory, and that kind of didn't work completely. And so he's all sometimes he's a little bit, little bit confused. And he's very direct. He has no filters. He's not like the a protocol droid that always tries to be diplomatic. And um, no, he says it as it is. And um, some of some people on the panel described him almost like a grumpy old man, like a, an old guy who was just brutally honest. He's, he's definitely going to be there as comic relief, but apparently also has a, a, a good emotional attachment to uh, to the characters. And that, well, that and makes that's me a, super excited. It's like I don't yeah. think we've ever seen something like that. Well, and it's perfect for Alan Tudyk. I mean, he's got that sort of um, that that fun, uh, sarcastic sort of thing that he can do. Um, the quips. Um, I mean, you know, we know him from Firefly, and that's, that's just I so didn't fantastic. Know that. Is he in Firefly? Oh my god! Oh, he's Wash from he's Firefly. Wash. Oh yes. boy, I've I've only read the, the <laughs> articles. I I didn't see the panel itself, but that's yeah. so cool. I'm a leaf on the wind. Firefly, Firefly lives on, and and exactly. Uh, no spoilers here, but I'm, I'm I'm more than happy. I'm double doubly happy. Oh yeah, so oh and and I've seen him in some other things that he's done, and he can be he can be madcap crazy. Uh-huh. He can be fun, sarcastic, and, and like and of course, and wash. I mean, he's very funny. He he's done a um uh, a series on um on Vimeo with uh-huh. Nathan Fillion. Uh, about called Cond, uh, I think it's called Cond or Con Man, but it's about uh, a guy who is a secondary character in a short-lived science fiction series, who uh, ends up whose career has gone nowhere afterward, who ends up having to go to these conventions uh, in order to get by, and is always overlooked in favor of the guy who was the star, and that's uh-huh. by Nathan Fillion. So it's it's sort wow. of semi autobiographical. <laughs> it's very funny. It's it's a series of like short five minute videos, and there's all kinds of people. Uh, Sean Astin does is in it. Um, I think. Um, um, oh, what's her name? Well. Um, uh, well, anyway, there's a bunch of people you recognize are, mm-hmm. are, are, are in it, and they play themselves or they play other characters. It's very funny. But, yeah, Alan Tudyk is just he's, – he's, he's great, and, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to there being a, um, a lightness that uh-huh. he can bring to it without going yeah. full Jar Jar. Mm-hmm. You know, that, oh, that's no, no, don't to don't relieve that. some of the grimness. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, well, he also yeah. played, uh, according to uh, my notes here, he played, he played a Sony in iRobot. And I, I did not know that, but that's a very, very intriguing yep. droid as well. It's a totally different uh, character. It's not the first time that he plays a droid uh, with motion capture. Exactly. And yep. and um, so uh, according to an interview in Entertainment Weekly, uh, Edwards told them that uh, K2SO is the antithesis of C-3PO, which makes me, makes me almost think back of the original plans for C-3PO. And uh, that, that was that C-3PO was not at all this kind of like butler-like 
British robot. No, it would be like almost like a car salesman, <laughs> very um, not civilized, and like the complete opposite of, of what C-3PO turned out to be uh, with Anthony Daniels in the in, in the suit. Um, almost as if they're kind of taking that idea and bringing it back with this story. I'm I'm well, super excited. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit like Chopper from uh, Rebels compared to R two D two. R two D two is sort of helpful and and yeah, you know, Chopper uh, never really and warmed sassy. to that character, and it's, it's it's kind of too abstract. It's it's just a you yeah. know R two unit, and it's, I just never really warmed warmed up to that character. Right. Uh, well, is, whereas whereas this this one will have lines and will yes. interact with people on that level. I, I think it might it'll play better in a live action. Yeah. The, 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 his looks remind me a little bit of the Iron Giant. Don't you think that's kind of like almost super old-fashioned robot droid type of style? Like, yeah. And I, I love the Iron Giant. There's a lot of emotion between the, 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 the robot, the giant robot, and the, and the kid. So perhaps that's another kind of tie-in or, or uh, thing that is referenced. I'm not sure. Um, let's see, what else did we learn? I loved uh, the the whole dynamic that you did, that, that the whole crew was there, all the actors were there. And that gave me so much confidence. I'm like, these are just awesome people. And I want to see them together. I just want to see how this, how this becomes a team. And it, it's going to be very, a very ragtag team, very different uh, characters. I mean, you've got Forrest Whitaker, you've got, um, what's his name, uh, Ben Mendelsohn, and of course, Felicity Jones, and Donnie Yen, and Jiang Wen. Uh, we go to a number of of new planets, so one of them is um, is this this almost mecha like planet, I think, which is invaded by the Imperials. Um, and they filmed that. Mm. Where did they film that? They went to uh, like a tropical island for that. It's a scene where where you have also have the at uh, the at ats. We can we have to call them at ats. Did you know that? Like the official. Uh, I've always said at -T, t and I thought it was like oh, it's just the non Star Wars fans that say at ats, but apparently it is at ats. <laughs> Oh, well. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that. I, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it'll always be an at that to me, to, to, to me. And, uh, it, it's like saying GIF or GIF. I, I don't know. I just, oh, uh, I, I'm going to say what I say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, so they went through this tropical setting to film a lot of the outdoor scenes. Also, again, to make it feel real. And there's a very, a very cool, funny moment where I think it's Garrett Atwood who, who, who uh, I asked. Ah, Someone, no, it wasn't him. I think I was listening to the Empire Empire uh, Magazine, which is a movie magazine. They have a podcast where they talk about uh, uh, lots of the movie stuff. It's a really great, great podcast. Um, and I think at one point it was mentioned that uh, the extras were were uh, were there, and they were playing stormtroopers. And the, some someone of the crew, perhaps the director, told them, "Like, don't you don't you think it's awesome to be a stormtrooper in the new Star Wars movie?" And there was like. Stormtroopers? What is a stormtrooper? Uh, well, it's, what? It's these soldiers in Star Wars. What is Star Wars? So they have no idea that they're playing like in the most beloved franchise of the universe. Because <laughs> they just hired a lot, like, a bunch of locals, and they, they did have no idea what Star Wars was. <laughs> Almost kind of like when they were filming A New Hope, and a lot of the extras were like, oh, I have no idea what, what kind of movie I'm in, but as long as they pay. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, what did you think of the poster that we saw? That you see the beach uh, the, and then the, the with, sky with a huge Death Star and the stormtroopers in the water. Yeah, I mean it's it's sort of strange to see stormtroopers walking along a beach, <laughs> you know, yeah. in the in the water, and um, it's to to see this this tropical location. It's it's sort of odd, but but I'm you know I'm happy to see them you know try to to do some different things uh, uh, with it. So um, to me, it felt a little bit. It doesn't tell us a whole lot more. No, I I just almost felt that this the Death Star is too big. It's it's <laughs> I mean, it, of course it's a moon, but that close to the planet. Really, I don't know. Might might just have yeah. been a flyby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you wonder about it because, you know, uh, you know, if we're going to get into the physics of things, you know, the that much mass so close to a planet would wreak havoc with tides and other, you know, this yeah, and, and or just size gravity like, and being in orbit. I mean, how do you? You might want to stay a little bit further away from the planet because otherwise you might crash. Right. Into it. But of course, right. it's for visual. I, it kind of harkens back to that very first 
kind of mock-up trailer that they did. Remember that one? Where you see this, this like, you fly over all these forests, very much in Avatar style, and then all of a sudden the camera pans up and you see the silhouette of the Death Star. I remember seeing that. That's like, right. Oh, that is so cool. We had no idea at the time that this was going to be about the, the Death Star and the plans of the Death Star, but it's almost as if the poster kind of brings that back. I'm not sure if it's it's if it's enough for for people that are of course the Death Star is very recognizable, but does it really want makes you want to go and see the movie? Um, I, I need characters. I need kind of a more of a personal approach to this. Uh, I think we're going to get a we'll get a better video, uh, better yeah. poster, closer to the to the yeah, day so. of the launch. So. There were immediately spoof posters where the the Death Star was um, replaced by a giant Pokemon ball. <laughs> 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 the Pokemon binds the universe together, right? <laughs> so anyway, there's lots more to talk about uh, with Rogue One, um, but there was, of course, a lot more Star Wars news. Before we uh, start talking about um, uh, Episode 8, let's talk briefly about the next standalone movie that is scheduled for 2019? Am I correct? No, 17. Now, this year is Rogue One. 18. 17 is 8. So 18, 2018, and it's the Han Solo standalone movie. Because we got a reveal of the main character, they finally found Han Solo. We've been hearing his name uh, uh, in the past, and it had already leaked out, so it wasn't much of a surprise. But it was very cool to hear kind of the, the backstory. And uh, I, I forgot his name. <laughs> Somewhere in my notes. Uh, Al Alden Ehrenreich, I think it is. Okay. Um, and... So, he we we first, What was your impression when you saw him? Is this going to be Han Solo? It's the scariest well, thing ever. <laughs> yeah, he he's he's young. He looks very young, uh -huh. um, and uh, I it, he doesn't look a whole lot like Harrison Ford to me. Uh, but well, he's got the same smile. You know, but, He's yeah, crazy. well, and and what they do with makeup and all that sort of stuff, he, you know, by the time they they film it, he'll he'll it'll look perfect. Um, he but he's young, and so that that you know we're looking at the origin story of Han Solo, how mm -hmm. he becomes, you know, who he is, uh, the the rogue, the smuggler. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna guess they start out. He's gonna be some straight laced. Um, Imperial, you know, or Corellian Academy, uh, very, uh, you know, straight as an arrow sort of character. That you got, you know, they almost they can't. I, I can imagine they they almost can't resist starting with the Han Solo, who is the opposite of the guy we know now. And how mm -hmm. does he get there? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a great story to tell. Uh, you know, how does Han Solo go from being that guy mm -hmm. to being the the scoundrel that we know? And that that should be great. Um, and my hope is, is that story also includes how he and Chewbacca meet. And and enter into their lifelong, uh, you know, their li lifelong friendship. It, it it's it's funny that they even did a screen test or a chem they called it a chemistry test with Chewbacca in the Millennium Falcon in the cockpit, <laughs> just to see how that would work yes. out. And I was like, that's the first time that I hear about a chemistry test, but so important. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember uh, that uh, we saw in the extras on the DVD and the Blu-ray of uh, the Phantom Man as we we get to see the um, the auditions of the main actors and and i was amazed to see the chemistry test or i'm not sure if it was called like that back then uh between natalie portman and um uh what's his name anakin skywalker uh hayden uh, hayden hayden, hayden Christensen. Christensen. and there really was chemistry and it was so much better than what we saw in the movie and I, so that's how casting can can be perfect, but then if the director doesn't understand chemistry and can't write for his characters, they can still mess it up. Um, and I, I, I was I was just so dismayed seeing that. I was like, oh, I just so wish that there were alternate takes where the chemistry that was clearly there when they were doing the casting would also transpire on the screen. Um, and, and and this was, uh, of course, for the second for the, the second and the third movie. Um, but anyway, so Han Solo and Chewbacca, apparently the chemistry is there. He was also revealed to be the first one they auditioned, and then they had 3,000 <laughs> other actors audition for the role. 3,000! <laughs> and they went back to well, the you first know, one. It's, 
and they must have compared every single one of them to that first guy who came in. Like, yeah. you, we, you know, we because I can imagine it's like, well, he was so good, but he's only the first one. You know, maybe yeah. we're just very excited. And uh-huh. Let's look at some others. And and, you know, it's sometimes it's the it's the very first one you see, the very first one you run into. Um, and he just nailed it, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he did have charm. And, and I, I, I was again i was a little bit more reassured i was like ah this is gonna work this is gonna be fun they know what they're doing and uh we've heard before that the the rumors about the script is that this this script is amazing and 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 apparently one of the best star wars scripts out there which is kind of cool and and makes me very curious um so but that that movie is is even more of a risk than this war movie because the war movie you can say it's a totally different genre but this is han solo so you cannot stray away too much from the classic Star Wars uh, style, I guess. You can turn this into a comedy or a slapstick. <laughs> Perhaps well, a spy it's movie too or a related, yeah. heist, heist movie. That, that might be interesting. <laughs> Not sure. Yeah, but it's so closely related to the you know the tentpole movies, the the the, the Skywalker saga. I don't think with that they can stray too far. This is a character we know, uh, one of the most beloved characters in cinema. You 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 can't go. You can't. I, I think in this case you can't take too many risks with him. You got to kind of uh, stake pretty close to the character we know and tell a story that plays to that strength. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, anyway, it was very cool to see him, and uh, again, they didn't focus too much on it because otherwise, it's getting even more confusing to a lot of people. <laughs> like, so how many Star Wars movies are there that we need to keep track of, and when is what taking place? Um, we also got more confirmation. Um, go back to Rogue One for a second. That um, uh, there's one character that already appeared in 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 uh, was it in Clone Wars? Did you hear that? Uh, the, uh, the, the, the character. I'm sorry, it, I, it cut out for a second. And so one one of the characters that we see in Rogue One is actually already appeared in um, in the Clone Wars uh, animated series. Oh, and yeah. I've yeah. not finished oh, watching that remember. yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to catch up myself. I just started season four of Clone uh, Wars. So yeah, I, I wonder. Uh, if it, wasn't it Forrest Whitaker's character? Um, anyway, perhaps the chat room knows best. And, yes. Yes. Um, in in fact, um, it was he was a child in one of the episodes of the Clone Wars, um, or at least a couple episodes. Um, he and his sister. Oh, I'm trying to remember exactly how it went. But yes, well, that, that was really a character matter. from the Clone Wars. The point that I wanted to make is, and this will bring us to the third uh, big topic that we want to talk about, is that we see them creating continuity between animated series. Um, and the upcoming movies and creating more of a, a, a kind of a connecting tissue between all those stories that are supposed to be canon. Um, uh, of course, this is kind of uh, uh, se- separates it from the Star Wars Legends, which used to be the expanded universe, and that got basically uncanonized. I'm not sure if that's possible. The Catholic Church says it's totally impossible to uncanonize someone, but here you can't do that. It's no longer <laughs> canon. And we'll just create a new canon timeline. Um, but the uh, Rebels, the Star Wars Rebels panel, which, by the way, I loved. Uh, it's just these people are so creative and funny. And I, I just, I, there was just a vibe around this series that I absolutely loved. Um, and uh, that panel ended with the trailer for the third season of Star Wars Rebels. I've only seen the, the first season so far, so... I was a little bit afraid that they would spoil things that would happen in the second season, but that was okay. Um, there was a reveal of a char- of a recurring character that they took from the expanded, the existing expanded Legends universe, no longer canon, and they brought it back into the canon timeline. And that reveal, of course, let yep. me play. Let me play the sound clip. It was Grand Admiral Thrawn. How awesome was that? <laughs> How. And and for younger listeners, you might not understand why everybody was going crazy, but you gotta you gotta imagine this. This took place. We were. Let's go back to 1991. Do you still remember where you were at that time, uh, Dom? Oh yeah, I, I do remember distinctly. Yeah, I was. Uh, um, 
I was living at home, uh, working in a factory. Um, it would have been a long time since any good science fiction had been out. Yeah. Um, I just came uh, back from, from uh, Belgium, um, and I started the second part of my uh, priestly formation. And uh, I, I was back in the Netherlands, I, 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 and the Star Wars was just absent. There was nobody was talking about Star Wars. There were no, no new movies, nothing. And then I, I remember going to, um, to Amsterdam, uh, because there was a this was way be before um, Amazon and, 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 and internet shopping and I knew in Amsterdam they had an what they call an American bookstore and they would import all these cool novels from and, and a lot of science fiction as well and comics from the United States and they would sell that it's the only place in the Netherlands where you could find stuff like that I remember uh, entering that bookstore going up to the science fiction department and then all of a sudden I see this novel heir to the empire timothy zahn and it was like new star wars what the what <laughs> and i just <laughs> emptied my wallet it's like take my money <laughs> and i read that that trilogy and it was like this is the the best thing ever this should be a movie it was basically the the, the sequel before uh before we got the real sequel the movie sequels but it read like classic star wars and and the main villain, of course, the Emperor and Darth Vader being being dead, uh, was a completely new character, Grand Admiral Thrawn, a blue-skinned uh, admiral who was kind of rebuilding the Empire, uh, very kind of similar to to the the the, the, the ragtag Empire that is trying to kind of regain power in, that we see in the Force Awakens. But here it's this this admiral that is taking the lead, and oh my gosh. Did, did you read it right away when it came out or I did I mean this the the, the, the great thing about the the book was that you know we had had some Star Wars novels a few uh, you know uh, Han solo adventures and a few things like that but they were all sort of took place you know before outside of the main timeline but this was the first Star Wars story that continued the story after return of the jedi and it was officially approved those yes. that was the that was the two big things that this is an official star wars sto story exactly um and so yeah i <laughs> i dove into that trilogy that Tim timothy zahn uh, uh wrote and um i thought um and and what timothy zahn did was he <laughs> set the bar he set the bar for a lot of the you know and and a lot of you know the not just the set the bar but he kind of set up how a lot of the Star Wars story would be told after that in all the books, yes. like the whole yeah. the the Star Wars expanded universe um, created a lot of the great characters that people love from that expanded universe that we lost when when Disney set that aside for the yep. Force Awakens. Yep. Um, Day, and that's what and, makes and, it so and, great. Yeah, and what I also thought was brilliant about his depiction of uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn was that he was a villain, clear villain, but a very, very different villain from Darth Vader and the Emperor. This was not just another creepy guy with a lot of power. No, he had no force powers whatsoever. Actually, he was quite, quite merciful. If something would go wrong, instead of death choking the guy and killing, you know, anyone who didn't do his job properly, he would basically be like a modern manager. He's like, take someone aside and it's like, now here's how you can improve <laughs> what you did for the empire what went wrong <laughs> try again and so he was actually a very popular uh leader within this this rebuilding empire and uh that made him so cool as a villain because you could understand why the old, the Im the imperials were all excited about uh, thrawn and he was a masterful planner and very you know tech tactician and a a genius in a way and, and and such a like we had never seen a character like that in the star wars universe and so when they when they uncanonized <laughs> the 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 zahn trilogy and also the that there have been more appearances of, of thrawn afterwards it was like this is the biggest loss of all i mean people uh, were were unhappy with mara jade who who was a uh, uh, married to luke skywalker in the uh, legends universe um but to me, Thrawn was always the best character of, of all the other characters. And, and the way they brought him back, like this guy stepping out of the shadows, and you, the reaction of the crowd, people were crying. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> 
And of course, <laughs> they were, the, the, the tears, the emotion was like, if they bring back Admiral Thrawn, and this is, of course, they're bringing him back in a, in a, in a, at a time before the Legends timeline. So they basically, they can do anything with it. It's, it's a prequel to the Thrawn that we knew from, from the existing books. And Timothy Zahn is right. going to write another novel about Thrawn. And I, I assume it's also going to take place at that, you know, early, the early days of Thrawn. But it, it also opens the way, it paves the way for more, you know, bringing back more characters of the expanded universe into the timeline, as long as it is taking place before the, um, the books. They, they can bring back Mara Jade and, and other characters. That's, I think, the the one of the things that got people why people reacted so strongly is, I mean, they it was Thrawn is a great character in and of himself, and that's enough to celebrate. But it's the message that it sends, which is, um, we, we you know the Disney understands the characters that the fans love yeah. and yeah. is going to listen and and serve the fans as much as they can while serving the the greater needs of telling a good story. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that 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 many people will like. I mean, you can't just throw Thrawn out there and you know we have a Thrawn movie and have expect people to know who he is outside of the fan base. Uh, so you know, it's Rebels. I think is a very much a fan show. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it 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 just feels like that. You get those a lot of these characters that people have uh, you know from various properties, um, uh, various you know movies mm -hmm. and TV shows. Um, and so it makes sense to have them there. Whether you know whether we will see any of those expanded universe characters show up in any of the movies, that's maybe maybe not. But it's certainly. I mean, well, and we did sort of like you mentioned, we did sort of see in Rogue One a character who is in Clone Wars, so she's going to show up there. So it gives you it gives you a little hope that that Disney is listening and that they care. That's yeah. the thing. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, let's let's be, let's be honest. They the they they mostly care about the bottom line. You know that. They they have to make a profit for the shareholders. That's their job, um, but they also care about the fans. They understand that caring for the fans is a, is an important job. Well, and caring for the fans is going to make you a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing worse you can exactly. do nowadays than than to you know make fans angry. Look at the whole you know bruja around the, the Ghostbusters and how how delicate it is to to kind of take something that fans love and then changing it. You know. But I think Disney does a exactly. really good job in, in uh, placating the fans with this. And I'm, I'm excited going back to the actor. And we had a bit of confusion, of course, about the, the Mickelson brothers. <laughs> but this right, time, right. Bart is really playing the villain. It's, it's really him. He is going to yes. voice uh, Thrawn. And I, now, that you, now that I know that he was the, the, the Putin-like character in House of Cards, I'm, I'm even more excited because that was the, such a brilliant, brilliant role. And and in a way, Thrawn oh, yeah. always made me think a little bit of a kind of like a Eastern European like evil guy. <laughs> there is a bit of a Russian slant to his uh, appearance. I'm not sure if he will have a Russian accent, but it might be a little bit too too easy to do that. But uh, <laughs> definitely, the the kind of character, very smart, very manipulative, but also there is something kind of you can understand why he does what he does. Perfect choice. I always, I always thought of Thrawn was a lot like uh, the the German general uh, Erwin Rommel, uh, mm. the Desert Fox, mm -hmm. uh, a brilliant strategist. He yeah. may not have been um, uh, ideologically as pure as some of the others, but mm -hmm. he was he was you know I mean he was a, he was a Nazi. Oh, well, that's, we understand yeah, but that. mostly but, someone but, who was very good at at, fair, at warfare <laughs> and. Uh, he yeah. was a soldier, right, mm -hmm. and strategic, and that's I, I kind of get that from Thrawn, uh, you know, that that idea that he's sort of a Rommel-like character. I love the fact mm -hmm. that the way Timothy Zahn wrote him, um, he gets to know his enemy by studying their art and their literature, yeah. their yeah, philosophy. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that idea that it's this, in, this intellectual strategist. Yeah. Um, you know, I like the humanities. I that's why I have a degree in in, uh, in, in the humanities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I find the importance in that. So uh, I love that idea. And they've preserved that in this character in, in Rebels. I, I wonder how they're going to write it, because Rebels is definitely geared towards a, a young audience. It's, it's, it's very, it's, you know, it's on big Disney XD, I think. XD, and so, yeah. Or, yeah, so it's, it's kind of for kids. Um, whereas Thrawn, as we know him, is very kind of an intellectual villain. So I'm not sure if the, how they are going to do that. Never underestimate the, the, the intellect of kids. 
But I hope <laughs> they're right, they're, gonna, right. they're gonna not dumb him down. That's kind of what I hope that the, the whole the, like intellectual cultural aspect of his villainy will be will be there. Um, and well, that's actually an. I'm sorry. Another part of the news related to Thrawn, by the way, it was that they announced that uh, Timothy Zahn has yeah. a new book coming yeah. out. Yeah, which of course uh, is going to be a bestseller. Thrawn. Yeah, it's going to be a bestseller. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and, and perfect, perfect alignment of all the, the the PR, you know, around around Rebels and around Star Wars. A very very smart move. That's right. I wouldn't That's be right. surprised in the future we might see like a Thrawn standalone movie. If Disney is going to milk this franchise for an, for another fifteen years, then why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting character, and, and Lars Mikkelsen could play him on the big screen. That would be very interesting. Oh boy, yeah, that would be awesome. All right, let's finally move over to the piece de resistance for for us, which <laughs> is uh, episode eight, and uh, what, what we've learned. Um, I well, as I mentioned before, we didn't learn as much as I wanted to. We did get some tidbits. Right. Uh, oh, by the way, we totally forgot to mention that that um, the the Rogue One panel. You can't watch it online. Disney took it offline because apparently there was a massive spoiler in there. One of the actors let oh. slip a massive spoiler. I have not read it because well, our policy is we want to stay out of these spoilers. But it was apparently so yes so much that they decided to take a, a, the the entire video <laughs> of the day offline. The entire day is offline. So. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Uh, actually, I did want to mention one thing before, because I know we want to finish with uh, episode eight, but yeah. uh, I did want to mention a, the, the very quick news, which is very interesting to me, that they're making a Darth Vader VR movie. I don't know if you saw that news. Oh, I uh, did see but the Tatooine VR demonstration. but I, This is uh, the, the idea that they're, it's for like the Rift and the... Uh -huh. Vive and yeah. for the various, it'll work for all the various ones. Um, well, I saw the I saw this little in, video where where you see Darth Vader, you know, walk, with his red lightsaber standing in in a Tatooine like landscape, and they say, "Well, imagine this in, in VR," and he's truly standing there in 3D. So this this is more than a demonstration. So this is they've brought in the screenwriter from uh, Batman versus Superman. He's uh -huh. writing it. Okay. Um, and he he apparently said. Um, uh, it's an interactive experience that lets the audiences not only watch but interact. Mm -hmm. uh, you are the visitor in this story that is happening in and around you, and to a certain extent, you might even have some effect on it. You can pick up things, you can open things, you can push things, you can walk, mm -hmm. you can touch characters. So it and it will it'll take place in a persistent world that cycles through day and night and continues on once the main story has ended. Whoa. So it's sort of I think it, the idea is it's a virtual reality world. That uh -huh. they're building like a sandbox. Will, if it's on Tatooine, it's definitely going to be a sandbox. <laughs> right. Well, and and there will be a movie that sort of is your entry into this world. Oh, so you'll, you'll watch a movie, and then then you can then interact with this world once the movie is finished. Wow. Uh, it's it's kind of kind of a little vague of the details, but uh -huh. um, so the 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 Tatooine simulator was was sort of their proof of concept on the technology. And now they're go they're going to the next level with it. That's apparently uh, what they were um, what they were going with on there. Amazing! It's it's super exciting. I love it that Disney, as a big company, one of the biggest entertainment companies in the world, takes this this uh, VR technology seriously as as a um, possible venue for storytelling, and they focus on the storytelling. It's yes. not just you know wowing people with the three D effects because anyone can do that, uh, but it's it's like telling stories and 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 giving a different entry point into that universe and I'm I couldn't be more excited it's still very experimental uh, it's almost like the Apple TV like it's an experiment it's a hobby uh, but uh, well the, the, yep. the, the best of the best are working in this uh, domain and I was also very excited getting glimpses of the new Star Wars games and uh, not just the Star Wars Lego game but there's this this other more photorealistic game that looks amazing and there, there too the focus is really on on storytelling um yeah it's it's kind of like the industry the video game industry is, is almost as big as or, or if not bigger than the than the movie industry mm -hmm. so it makes sense for them and if vr is going to be where the eyeballs and the wallets go <laughs> disney wants no one's a piece of that <laughs> so yeah that, right. there might be a time well, when we will be just walking around in the star wars universe in, inside the movies. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Star All right, Wars so 8. Let's get down to business. Eight. 
what did we learn? What What's the thing that comes to mind immediately when you think about Star Wars 8, Star Wars Celebration? Uh, well, for me, it's the, the, the they revealed basically uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the first thing that happens in the movie, which is we're going to start off exactly where uh, The Force Awakens ended. Yeah. We're going to start off with Ray having been holding that lightsaber out for two years, waiting for Luke Skywalker to take <laughs> it. Uh, apparently, that's exactly where that that uh, movie is going to begin. So yeah. I, I think it's fascinating that we're like there's not going to be any lapse of time. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be an opening scroll? What are you going to say in the opening scroll? As we've mentioned before in Star Wars Seven, <laughs> Skywalker has now been found and. <laughs> Right. I mean, if, if if like the 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 lack of an opening scroll in Rogue One is wouldn't be so surprising, but the lack of an opening scroll in Episode Eight that would it's be, be big. That would, to me, that's a and, bigger departure. I, I mean, saying that this is this is this is continuing the final scene doesn't mean that we don't get to see something that is happening, you know, at the same time elsewhere in the universe. And that's kind right. of my take on it. That we'll probably have a pan down, and will they will first show us something that's going on, you know not on the Ireland planet, <laughs> but it's going to be elsewhere in the universe. <laughs> and, then, and then we go back to that moment where Luke Skywalker, so you were saying, <laughs> you, who are you, Ray? <laughs> All right, let's, go, let's get down to business. I, I love it that, um, uh, that finally Mark Hamill gets lines that his, he gets, I mean, he, he was there at celebration being his, his, his usual self. He's super entertaining. Yeah. Um, and he made like for an hour. He made jokes about him not having any lines in the first movie. <laughs> it's, it's like the, the first thing, the first line of the opening scroll is Luke Skywalker's mission in action, and he's like, "Oh, cool! The whole movie is going to be about me." Yeah, it's going to be about me missing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he's a great actor. He's he's. I mean, he's the darling of the fans. He, his interaction with the Star Wars oh, yeah. fans. I mean, you see it from the live streams. It's so. It's everything you hope that he, that he is. I mean, I've, I've idolized Mark Hamill as a child. I wanted to be him. I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. And then seeing him being so approachable, it, I, I, mean, I, I think he's the Pope Francis of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if, if anyone is is Star Wars in, in a person, yeah. uh, even more than George Lucas, it's mm -hmm. Mark Hamill because he's the recognizable face. And any money that Disney can give to him to if you know if they had to pay him to be like this, it would be money well spent because yeah. Yeah. he is a great ambassador for Star Wars. Uh, he's he's just so so good, so approachable. You know, Harrison Ford has a reputation for being kind of grumpy. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you know, so he's you know, he's Harrison Ford. That's fine. We're okay with that. Mm -hmm. But but you know, not Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill has always been very approachable, and that's great. Yeah. And so, uh, according to uh, Daisy Ridley, the character of of Luke Skywalker is very cool. The word "cool" comes back in almost any comment on this new movie. It's a cool movie. It's cool also because they are doing stuff that we've never seen before, and. Um, the thing that intrigues me more than worries me is that that we heard that this movie is going to focus on the characters. It's going really to it's going yes. to push them. And this is a character-based movie, and that to me is I think the secret to a successful sequel. You cannot replicate the kind of nostalgia that Episode Seven brought us. But now that we've gotten to know these characters, the only way I think to make this a, 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 a success is to help us connect to these characters. And basically, at the end of, the, of, of eight, we, we, we will be so much into this team of new characters that we don't want to see them go. That, that's kind of what I believe. Like the, it, this, is, this yep. is pivotal in making us love all these characters, even the bad guys, so that whatever happens in episode three to them will have a massive, massive impact. And I think that that's well, exactly what they're doing. Well, that's the the thing. You know, the episode seven had to reintroduce the universe, had to introduce these new characters, had a lot to do, and there was a lot going on. Um, episode nine is going to wrap up a six movie thread of about this family, and there's going to be a lot there. So this movie, as a as the second part of this trilogy, has a lot of a lot of carry it's the this is the meat of our story here yeah. that's yeah. going to carry us to the end uh so yeah I, and i love that that it's character focused it's not just going to be explosions and 
in TIE Fighter Battles, as much as I love that. They did say um, that they built just an an insane amount of sets for this movie. So they wanted to do as much practical as as possible, just like what they did with uh, with Seven, um, just to make it feel real. And I think that, too, is is good, because if it's just character-based, it wouldn't be Star Wars. You need to have that idea that you're in an established world. And building all those sets will help doing that, and it will also help the characters to do a, a good, have a real performance. Um, so Ryan Johnson is um, has been given an incredible license, uh, and um, wasn't wasn't it Kathleen Kennedy who said it's he's like the new Spielberg when it comes to the way he films this? Um, I've I've heard that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, it, it, what I like about it is everybody seems to agree on one thing, and that is that Ryan Johnson with this script is something that we haven't seen before. And um, another intriguing tidbit was that they said they based the story of Star Wars 8 not on the fan reaction to Episode 7. They were writing this while watching the dailies this, uh, for Star Wars 7. This is, this yeah. is based on their personal uh react gut reaction to what they saw in the process of filming including probably the chemistry off screen uh of what was happening around seven and 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 so that made me believe that this is not going to be a um like a run of the mill like here's what the fans want and we'll give them that this is not going to be uh, uh star wars seven revisited this is going to be its own thing and it, well they said that Episode nine is the same thing is happening is that the director, Colin Trevorrow, Mm -hmm. um, has been writing episode nine during the filming of episode eight. So it's that I think they've they've hit on a formula that works. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm even thinking that they were like the writers, literally the teams that were writing these movies were next door to to each other. Like the team that was writing Rogue One was next door to the team that was writing Episode Eight. So I imagine you're after you're you're done like brainstorming for an entire morning. You go to the if this is happening on Skywalker Ranch, you go to the, that amazing food court that they have there, and that like the setting is is like paradise. It's such an amazing place to be, and then you get all <laughs> that chemistry between all those creative people, and they talk and they they and they help each other with the stories. I, this is not Apple, oh. where like every department is like completely completely in a in a in a vault and uh, and is not allowed to 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 even utter sound a, after they leave the room yeah. this is all about about like uh cross pollination i think and uh um, well like pixar yeah, yeah pixar yeah, is famous much. for that mm-hmm. yeah so uh, it, i think again another lesson disney learned from other properties yeah. uh pixar's if you, like pixar's headquarters is this playground of fun and creativity and um, it sounds like they've brought that to Lucasfilm as well. I, I love that. Um, yep. You know, one of the other things that that we learned was that about the inspirations for this movie that uh, that Ryan Johnson was inspired by several other movies, yes. older movies. Um, they even sat down o'clock. with the cast at the theater yeah. at Lucasfilm uh, to watch those classic war movies. Most of them are war movies, right? Yes. And, and uh, then twelve they, o'clock uh, high. Yeah. Oh, yep. Hawkeye, 1949, um, the, Gregory Peck. Yep. Uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai, amazing movie. Oh, I love um, that one. I the, know, one that I, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the one I don't know, which is uh, Three Outlaw Samurai. But but again, we know that a lot of Star Wars is based on the old S- it's Samurai Kurosawa, Kurosawa yeah, films. Kurosawa thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about a wandering yeah, ronin who becomes tangled with two other samurai who are hired to kill a band of peasants who have kidnapped the daughter of a corrupt magistrate. So it's kind of the, the, a lot of these movies have this ragtag, small team, three people, four people, um, yep. up against the odds. What other? And movies then the fourth one, which is uh, <laughs> the fourth one, was one of my dad's favorite movies, and uh, so in one of mine, uh, Gunga Din, which takes place in uh, wow. British India, um, yeah. and Gunga Din is uh, is the servant of these British officers, and he's sort of overlooked throughout most of the movie, uh, and is the hero by the end. You know the oh, the famous yeah. line being. You're a good man, Gunga Din, you know, and it's just that it's a so, it, you know, I'd suggest to, to fans if you want to get a sense of what what episode eight might be yeah. like, it, these would be good movies to put on your Netflix. There's two other movies, A Letter Never Sent from 1960. This is about a, a group that gets isolated because of the big forest fire and then they have to fight to survive. Mm-hmm. So that, that kind of also points to 
you know, character driven plot. If you're isolated and you have to survive, perhaps putting like yep. a bad guy together with a good guy. What what if what if Kylo Ren and Rey end up in a dire situation and then all of a sudden inside of instead of fighting each other, they have to help each other and form like this uneasy alliance? <laughs> How cool would that be? Never seen before. Mm. I would I would love something like that. That'd be interesting. And then there is Sahara, also a famous movie from nineteen forty three. Um mm where it's uh, the crew of a tank who gets separated from its unit uh, during a retreat from the German forces. And then, of course, they need to kind of survive that. And then there is this fight going, be going on between the British army guys and basically trying to bluff the Germans because they all want, they both are, are trying to get to a well, hoping to find water because it's taking place in the desert. And then uh, the well, but there is this, like the Commonwealth that they both want, and then they, they who is going to win? So I'm thinking, if that's the force, mm -hmm. the water is the force, then you could have that same thing happening between like two, yeah. two factions trying to, to tap into the same well of power, and who is going to win? And who's, who is bluffing, you know? <laughs> who truly has the force? Right. <laughs> trying but to outmaneuver each other. Yeah. yeah. But uh, th th this, is, this is the perfect kind of Star Wars information. This reminds me so much of the of, of when we were talking about Lost. And you remember in, in Lost in the TV series, almost every episode there would be a book in the background or or a like a, a record, uh, and a record player with yep. an old record. And then we would all go and read all those novels, like hoping for to find <laughs> clues. And of course, it was all rubbish. <laughs> they were totally. Yeah. But I, it's just like pointing people towards almost what what uh, Admiral Thrawn would do, like. Go and watch this painting and learn. And this is this is, this is <laughs> reintroducing a lot. I'm sure a lot of young Star Wars fans will now go to Netflix and watch these black and white movies that they would never touch with a stick <laughs> if it hadn't been for this <laughs> remark. Because you watch that movie, and it's gonna be you. You will see why when the movie comes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so evil if none of this would ever end yeah. up in, in episode eight. So apparently the movie with the well, biggest influence is going to be 12 o'clock high. Uh, so that that is, mm. you'll see a lot of that in, in the plot of, of episode seven. So I, I still have, I haven't watched any of these movies, but I have my, uh, my homework cut out <laughs> for me. Yes. Well, actually the 12 o'clock high, that's ironic. Uh, my, my 10 year old has been studying the history of world war two. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she's been interested in planes. And so I've been looking for uh, movies that would be appropriate for her about the the air war and so 12 o'clock high was one of the ones that i put on my list so i'm like oh great this is homework <laughs> so you, we can watch uh, 12 o'clock high together <laughs> yeah cool that's that's another way to approach star wars with with your kids <laughs> awesome <laughs> but i love it because that's that's always been the strength of star wars when george lucas was 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 uh writing a new hope he was hearkening back to these old war movies, even the dog fights that you see with X-wing fighters, and that was all based on yep. old war movies and the kind of storytelling that that they used there. And that's why it, these movies, even though they were new at the time, felt so familiar because it was like based on a genre that we all knew, just like it's based on a lot of religion stuff and philosophy stuff that we were familiar with, and then just mm -hmm. kind of reshaping it for the Star Wars universe. Um, Noah Thompson yes. in the chat room asks us, do you think that the rumors about Poe and Finn's homosexual relationship is going to be in the next film? I don't think so. That's just, that's a fan interpretation. Um, I, I don't think that, they, that, that it's necessary for the story um, to do that. Yeah, and yeah that, that wouldn't be, well, I don't know. I don't, I didn't see that was, happening. It was clear. It was very clear in in the Force Awakens that there was meant to be this attraction between Finn uh, to Rey that he was yeah. attracted to her. But, but I almost think, like, I like, think... like childhood uh, friends, you know. Like I had a girlfriend when I yeah. was in, in in primary school, but we were not in love. But we were best mates, you know, inseparable. And right. why why can't it, why why can't we think broader than 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 than. Uh, the, the categories right. of heterosexuality or homosexuality, friendship. That is what Star Wars is about. And it's about loyalty and betrayal. Right. And the, those are, I think, much more important themes. Uh, so, yeah, this is not Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I think I'm, that... Uh, uh, the, <laughs> well, I think that in the that Poe and Finn, I think that it if it's a just a great friendship, that why I, I want to see movies where men have great friendships. 
yeah. um, very close to each other. That, that doesn't have to be about romance. That that it can just yeah. be just like I want to see movies where men and women can have great friendships. Yeah. Where that don't it doesn't have to be about romance. And but and R I think if R we can preserve the movie that way. R two D two C three PO. That's friendship. Yes. You know, there's no romance there, but that's, we love that. We love that those two are inseparable. That's the kind of stuff that Star Wars is about, according to me. But then again, I might be wrong, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> um, other news about uh, Star Wars, there was a little bit of a spoiler um, in uh, that, of course, uh, Carrie Fisher was on stage as well. And well, we all know that she is her own one man show or one woman show. It's unbelievable. <laughs> She's hilarious, but also she must be the scariest person on the universe for Disney. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the thing that she can say is like, ah, oh, how do we how do we go in damage repair? <laughs> she let loose that she, she is going to be involved in episode nine as well, which I think is pretty major. Because it means that they're not going to kill her off, and unless she appears as a ghost. But then I'm thinking, you know, I right. don't think that we will see any Force ghosts because this has been such a massive success in China, and and, and I've learned from the whole uh, uh, controversy around Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters, is that it can't be shown in China because apparently there's a law that forbids realistic depi depiction of ghosts in movies. That's why they can't show hmm. Ghostbusters. So I'm thinking they might want to steer away from the whole Force ghost thing. You don't want to miss China. It's interesting. <laughs> you don't want to miss China. Yeah. <laughs> it would be unfortunate if that sort of thing um, affected the tell the uh, the storytelling. If like if if they had to really change the story based on on yeah, that. But, I, but, but honestly, uh, I'm I'm kind of done with, it, with if it's not necessary. I don't yeah. mind them completely stepping away from the fourth ghost thing. That only invites future George Lucas's to replace actors in the ghost appearances by other actors. And then, oh, I'm, I'm traumatized by that. I don't want to see any more fourth ghosts. Just a voice in your head. Well, Trust your feelings. That's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it certainly opens up uh, potential problems too. You know it's that you get the Deus Ex Machina problem of you know if if a force goes from some you know uh, long dead uh, Jedi master can show up at any time and influence things, then well, I mean that you you still you can sort of um, uh, ruin suspense and 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 you know like well he, well why isn't just calling a force ghost at this point you yeah. know that that sort of thing. So I, I'm okay with that. I mean it's it, that was the original trilogy. Um, and maybe that was a, a thing that happened in a particular time and place in the Star Wars universe that doesn't go, isn't going to happen again. Uh, yeah. I'm okay with it. Let's move on. Well, and the Force has just awakened, so perhaps this is just a new era for the Force, and they're going to use something else. I don't know. Um, yeah. Any other news? Well, we, of course, we know that uh, Captain Phasma is going to return. When I saw the audience's reaction to her uh, presenting the show, of the well, the actress. Uh, uh, blanking out on her name, she's from Game of Thrones. Um, oh, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm so bad with these. Chris, Chris, Christy, um, Gwendolyn Christie. Gwendolyn Christie. There you go. She's so popular, and she's she's also just like Luke, uh, like Mark Hamill, so great with the fans, and super excited herself to be involved in Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I really hope that she gets a good role this time, and that we'll see like what happened to her. <laughs> did you see that spoof thing that they did? Like they took a photo no. of the big, big banner at the Star Wars uh, celebration because, of, of, of course, the word was that they that we would see more of Captain Phasma, and so there was this spoof website that made it seem as if there was like a. You remember when you see a car that has been squashed in a, and it's just a square, yeah. you know, <laughs> thing. And they did that with the armor of Captain Phasma, and then they placed that in a photo, and it looked just as if that was projected on a big screen at the Star Wars celebration. So that would be the return of. <laughs> Phasma just squashed in the, the. I thought it was hilarious, and of course people fell for it with the literal <laughs> internet. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a joke. But I really hope that she she gets more lines and 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 has I, yep. I, 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 more substance to her character. Speaking yeah, of uh, that, would be a shame. Yeah. Speaking of episode seven, of course we have to be uh, uh, transparent to our listeners. You all are still waiting for our discussion of the rest of the movie. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do that. We're definitely going to do that. It's just been a little bit busy, and gosh, Dom, you have a new job, and I've been like all over yeah. the place with my work. 
But, you know, it's, we still got a year to do this, right? Episode eight is still another year to wait for. So we're just going to exactly. space it out. But this is all planned. <laughs> we do this on yes, purpose. It's, that's right. <laughs> we have like a seasonal return to uh, the, the, the fount of, of joy that was episode seven. Any final remarks? Because we need to wrap this up. Uh, what, what was your general uh, impression? Yeah, or, or, or things that you remember. Well, my my general impression is is there was a lot of news, a lot of things happening. It was really tough to kind of follow it all. Um, but that that Star Wars and Disney did a gr great job of trying to keep all the fans, even the ones who couldn't be there, connected. Um, there was news about books and toys and TV shows and and all that sort of stuff. And it was this. It, it, to me, it says that Star Wars is it's alive and well and growing. Yeah. I want to I want to direct our uh, listeners to one particular video of a, a panel that was about the archaeology of of Star Wars special effects. I forget the precise name, but it was an ILM uh, presentation of how they went back and recreated some of the of the footage and the models from the original A New Hope. For instance, the Death Star. Lucasfilm does not own the original Death Star anymore. It was it was put in a box, stowed away, and someone sold it, and now it's in basically the home of a fan. But what they did is they created a super photorealistic copy of that using all the photos of that model that are on the internet and and warping it in the computer to create this amazingly detailed. And that is why the trailer of Rogue One. I remember fans were like, "Are those models?" Because they looked like plastic models that were used in A New Hope. And, and it's just fascinating. Remember the, the plans of the Death Star that you see projected before they uh, before Luke takes off in his X-Men fighter? Remember that kind of crude 3D thing? Uh, like the, the animation yes. of the Death Star? Well, they, they, they completely remade that. And, and uh, they, they reveal some little tidbits about it. Just a, an amazing video. I love that kind of stuff. And, and I, was, um, I was surprised to see that just on a panel on the Star Wars Celebration, because this is stuff that could have been on any, you know, Blu-ray extra disc. I, I would pay for just that that single uh, talk. Yeah, it's just amazing. Actually, that, that makes me wonder, why don't they sell this stuff? <laughs> Instead of just selling tickets for a celebration, why don't they put this on a on a Blu-ray set? I would buy a Blu-ray set if it, if it had all the panels of the Star Wars Celebration. Oh my gosh. Anyway, let's not give them ideas. Disney will know how to milk our wallets in the future. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of The Secrets of Star Wars. Also, make sure you check out our other shows. We have a general secret show uh, that we record from time to time. That Those are also episodes based on movies. Sometimes there might be Star Wars in there. There's definitely going to be a lot of Star Trek in there because, of course, Star Trek is coming back to both the big and the small screen. Um, I've got a, uh, a weekly show called The Break and another weekly show, show called The Walk. You might want to check that out. And then, uh, Dom, you are hosting uh, Let's Talk, which is a, a, a general talk show about many uh, topics of interest. Um, and, uh, well, whenever there is uh, news about, from Star Wars and whenever we find a moment, we will definitely continue this series as well. And, of course, we are waiting and waiting and waiting for new Doctor Who episodes, so that we can start, okay, we can pick up where we left our fans of the secrets of Doctor Who. But if you have, if you're binge watching Doctor Who, you might want to check out our two seasons uh, that we recorded of commentary on uh, on Doctor Who. Anything else you want to add? Where can people find you online, Dom? You're you're all silent now. <laughs> can you still hear me? No, I I, I think I lost you. Did we lose? Yeah, we lose Dom. I can still hear, hear <laughs> him breathing, but I think his microphone just stopped working. Anyway, links to us uh, on social media in the show notes. Thank you so much for, for listening to this uh, hour and what is it? Uh, 22 minutes. Uh, that's actually shorter than I thought it would be. And we'll be back for more. Thanks for, for listening and take care. All right, Dom, I lost you. Mm, I even lost the window where I could see you. Let me go to the Google Hangouts. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's gone. Oh, well.
can happen. Anyway, thank you uh, in the chat room for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Sorry for the mess up with the uh, Mickelson character uh, early on in the show. Thanks for uh, helping us uh, correct that. And um, I'm, I need to get out of this room because it's it's literally it's like 90 degrees. I'm 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 very very warm here. So um, well, take care and talk to you soon. Bye bye.